Hello, good day. Let's continue. Last part of extinguishing an obligation is basically novation. Ano ba yung novation? So, obligations under 1291 may be modified by changing their object or principal conditions, substituting the person of the debtor, and then subrogating a third person in the rights of the creditor. So, novation could be total or partial extinction of an obligation through the creation of a new one which substitutes it. So, basically, dito ha, makikita mo na kung ano ba yung purpose ng novation. So, alam na natin na ang pinaka-purpose ng novation ay basically yung, origi yung original na obligation ay may extinguish. And then, second is, nagkakaroon ng creation ng panibagong obligation. So, ano ba ang mga requirements ng novation? So, under 1292, it says that in order that an obligation may be extinguished, so by the way, here, ang obligation ay na-extinguished ng dahil sa merong na-create na panibagong um, obligation. So, ang na-extinguished lang pala ba, ibig sabihin ay yung original na obligation. Na na, at nagkakaroon na tayo ng panibagong obligation. So, 1292, in order that an obligation may be extinguished by another would substitute the same, it is imperative that it be so declared in unequivocal na terms or that the old and the new obligations be on every point incompatible with each other. So, when we say unequivocal, very clear, dapat ano, na siya ay um, nagkakaroon ng extinguishment and the substitution of a new obligation. Ano. And then, here, um, what are the requisites then of a novation? So, dapat may previous na valid of the obligation. Second is the capacity and the intention of the parties to modify the obligation. And then, the modification or extinguishment of the obligation. And then, the last one is, nagkakaroon po tayo ng creation of a new and valid na obligation. So, sa kinds naman ng obligation, meron ding uh, novation, by the way, meron ding express at saka implied. So, kapag express, marinaw, klaro, yun yung sinasabi natin in an equivocal na terms, yun yung express. Kapag implied naman, yun yung sinasabi natin dito na very much incompatible with each other. So, nagkakaroon po tayo ng um, implied na novation. So, yun po yung ibig sabihin. So, ano pang mga example nito? Magbibigay tayo ng kahit isang example lang. Ano? So, let's say for example, a residator ay may utang kay um, creditor a specific car. Ano? So, later on, a residator and creditor nag, na nag-agree nag sila na instead of giving um, the car, si debtor na lang ay magdi-deliver ng uh, jeepney. Ano? Imbis na car, so jeepney na lang. So, yung previous na obligation na car ay napapalitan na lang ng new obligation to deliver a jeep. Ano? So, another is, for example, erin si debtor ay may utang na 10,000 ano? With, with with um, the creditor and then later on they have agreed na instead of paying aring si debtor will babayad I, it will be um, another person um, who will pay for no um, no Let's have ano, another person who in agreement with them would pay na lang in behalf of the on behalf of the original debtor. So nagkakaroon po tayo ng novation doon dahil ay nagkakaroon tayo ng substitution ng third person in the person of the kita substitute natin yung person ni debtor. Ano? So yun po yung mga examples natin ng uh, novation. Let's have 1293. Ang sabi ng 1293 ay, Novation which consists in substituting a new debtor in place of the original one 
may be made even without the knowledge or against the will of the latter, but not without the consent ni creditor. <clears throat> and then, payment, payment by the new debtor gives him the rights mentioned in Articles 1236 and 1237. So, ano ba dito? Ang dito ay ang ang third person on his own initiative and even now without the knowledge or against the will of the original na na debtor ay inassume niya yung obligation ano ang tawag dito ay expromission ano so there are different kinds of substitution so substitution on the person of the debtor so one is expromission or taking place when a third person of his own initiative and without the knowledge of the debtor or against the will of the debtor original debtor by the way assumes the latter's obligation with the consent dapat ni creditor it is essential that the old debtor shall be released from his obligation otherwise there is no expromission so ex example dito x is indebted to y in the amount of 10,000 Z, a third person, paid 10,000 to Y. Is there an expromission? None yet. Kasi, expromission will only take place if expressly stated that the debtor shall be relieved from its indebtedness. So, dapat meron pong express na release on the part ng kay debtor na obligation. Na hindi na siya unsearable. Ano? Um, another thing is, um, another form of substitution is that it is called um, delegation. Ano, delegation takes place when the creditor accepts a third person ano, to take place of the debtor at the end instance of the latter. Sino ba si latter na to? Si last person at the instance of the debtor. The creditor may withhold for his approval. Ano? So, ibig sabihin nito, let's have an example first. So, X is indebted to Y in the sum of 10,000. X, the debtor, told Y that, say, a third person will pay for this at indebtedness. In this case, there are three parties, the old debtor, the creditor, and the new debtor. So, there is the, um, ikaw nga ay... Mommy, I get my grade I got great Wow, that's nice. Where did you get that? The goo getting. Where? The goo. What's goo? The slime. Ah, it's a slime. From the slime you get that one? No, this is the, the toy eggs. Oh, okay. It's the egg thing, Marcy. Get egg. If you open that one, what will come off? What will She's come out? Like this. I like this. Like this, she's a dance. So let's resume under delegation. So in delegation, ano, one which takes place when the creditor accepts a third person to to take to take the place of the original debtor. Ano. So in those cases, kasi may mga Mommy. so ayun nga po dapat a with. Uh, well, the creditor should accept the third person kasi let's say for example nga kasi nagmamatter what if yung na kapag na delegate yung obligation to the third person and then the third person would become or the new debtor would become insolvent what would happen would the um, creditor have the right of recourse papunta kay original debtor well it depends ano so in delegation it's one which takes place when the creditor accepts um, a third person who takes place the uh, place of the original debtor no? at the instance of the original debtor so if in cases that the or the, the, the new debtor or yung delegated na third person becomes insolvent and who has been proposed by the original debtor and accepted by the creditor um, you shall not revive the action of the um the 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 creditor against the original na debtor except when that insolvency or yung nan failure to pay for debt was already existing and was a public knowledge or known to the debtor when he delegated his debt importante iyon ano so as an example pagpapalagay rin si debtor may utang na 10,000 kay 
um, kay creditor. Before ng due date na yon, arin si debtor, idinidelegate niya yung kanyang utang kay ex. Napinayagan naman ni creditor. Ngayon, ang tanong, ari bang si debtor uh, sa obligation with the creditor, original natin na creditor, ay na-extinguish na. So, yes, because ang creditor naman ay nag-consent doon sa innovation. Supposing nga, arin si new debtor na delegated ni, de ni, ano, ni original debtor becomes insolvent. Si creditor ba po pwede mag-proceed kay original debtor to collect the 10,000? Well, basically, no. Ano, uh, malinaw yun. Kasi, except lang at the time of, if at the time of the delegation, aring si debtor new na aring si De new debtor na kung saan dinelegate ni original debtor yung kanyang utang is already insolvent alam na nito sa public knowledge that uh, that X is insolvent um, because the debtor here well, in that case kaya pwedeng mag maghabol uli si creditor kasi in bad faith na siya kasi dinelegate niya kahit alam na alam na public knowledge na na um, ay yung uh, si third person or si new debtor ay um, insolvent. What are the requisites then of expromission and delegation? In expromission, tatandaan natin, the initiative of payment comes from a third person, the consent of the creditor and the new debtor is required, and the obligation of the old debtor is absolutely extinguished. Whereas in um, delegation, ang initiative of payment comes from the debtor, ano? And then, the original debtor in delegation, um, the creditor, and the third person or the new debtor must consent sa delegation. And then, the obligation of the old debtor is generally extinguished. Ano? Yun po yun. 1296. 1296 is what is the effect of novation on accessory na mga obligation. So, in 1296, the principal obligation is extinguished in consequence of a innovation. Accessory obligations may subsist only in so far as they may benefit, may benefit third persons who did not give their consent. So, basically, in this provision, um, a debtor is indebted to the creditor and the latter is also indebted to a third person when there exists an agreement that the original debtor will pay the indebtedness of his creditor to a third Person. So, basically, yung principal obligation is extinguished by the novation and then the accessory obligation shall subsist only in so far as it is may benefit the third person who did not give to the consent. That is under 1296. So, anong ibig sabihin yan? So, pagpapalagay baga na si debtor may utang na 10,000 kay creditor, ano na may interest na 14%, pagpapalagay. Yung interest na yon should be given to um, a third person. So, ating, ating papangalanan siyang si X. Later on, aring si debtor at saka si creditor ay nagkaroon na kasunduan na instead of paying the creditor 10,000, si debtor would only just give um, a specific car to the creditor. Ano? So, imbis babayadan ay car na lang. So, ang nangyayari ay yung original obligation ni debtor na magbayad ng 10,000 kay creditor ay na-extinguish. Pero paano naman yung 14% na interest na dapat ibibigay kay X na-extinguish ba yun? Well, hindi po siya na-extinguish unless of course if X nakapag-consent doon sa novation ni na uh, debtor at ni creditor. Yun pong ibig sabihin at ang example ng 1296. Ano? 1297, 1298, hanggang 1301. Well, basically, what would be the effect of in void obligation, and effect of novation in voidable and um, in, yeah, in voidable na mga uh, contracts. So, let's have 1297 first. If the new obligation is void, new obligation ng void, the original one shall subsist unless the parties intended that the former relation should be extinguished in any event. So, 
here, the novating contract or the new contract would be considered as void ano if the um, if the original obligation is void then the new contract or the novating contract would be considered as void under 1297 well if the novating contract or the new contract is the one which is void tatandaan ninyo ang mangyayari ay yung original one shall subsist kuha and then 1298 the novation is void if the original obligation was void except when the annulment could be may be claimed only by the debtor or when the ratification validates acts which are voidable so what if if um the original nga what if the original obligation was subject to a suspensive or resolutory condition well, under 1299, the new obligation shall be under the same condition unless it is unless it is otherwise stipulated. And um, here, I'll just discuss this one fully. Ano isa isa? We'll be reading na lang first as they appear in your presentation in the presentations. And then 1290 and 12 uh, 1300. Subrogation of a third person in the rights of the creditor is either legal or conventional, and then the former means a third person is not the former is not subrogation is not presumed except in cases expressly mentioned in this code, and then the latter must be clearly established in order that it may take effects. And then, conventional subrogation of a third person requires the consent of the original parties and of the third person under third, 1301. 13, here, ang question lang is, what is the effect of novation if old obligation nga is voidable? Kapag sinasabi natin voidable, um, valid ang um, obligation not until it is considered as, uh, declared as, uh, void diba? so if the original obligation is voidable only tatandaan natin a valid novation can take place kasi voidable contracts po are valid until they are annulled by a proper action in court so po pwede din yung kasamahan lang din yung sa compensation ano, dapat nga lang nangyayari po yung atin pong compensation or novation uh, while it is not yet declared by the court as void or invalid. What is the effect if the new obligation is voidable? Ano? Yung new novating contract or yung bagong contract ang voidable? Well, if the new obligation is voidable, so not void yun ha, the old one is extinguished and the new one shall be given force and effect until it is de declared to be um, void or it is declared to be, it is annulled. So, pareho pa din, um, voidable contracts are subject to ratification to give them a lasting effect. So, it means to say that not unless then if there would be um, acts which validates what those voidable contracts or ratify such when it could be considered um, uh, valid. I know. So, 1299, what is the effect if the original obligation is subject to, the, to a condition? So, if the original obligation is subject to a suspensive or resolutor condition, the new obligation shall be under the same condition as well. So, unless it is um, otherwise stipulated. So, under 1300, ano yung subrogation pala? So, sinasabi diyan 1300, ang subrogation ay yun yung transfer to a third person lahat ng rights appertaining to the creditor ano including the right to proceed against the guarantor yung possession ng mga mortgage property and then subject of course to any legal provision or modification that may be agreed upon so ibig sabihin nito parang like mm, the third person is in the shoes of the creditor, siya yung nakaka-acquire ng mga rights. Yan yung subrogated na sa rights ni, ni, ni creditor. So, 
subrogating in a to a third person in the rights of the creditor may be made conventional or legal ano according to 1301 ang conventional ibig sabihin nito by agreement ano of the original creditor and then the third person substituting the original creditor and the um um the creditor and the debtor have um consent to that so kapag legal naman pag sinasabing legal ang subrogation in by operation of law so this is not uh, presumed because the law provided for it and then 1302 under 1302 it is presumed that there is a legal subrogation when first one when the creditor when a creditor pays another creditor who is preferred even if without the debtor's knowledge and then when a debtor not interested in the obligation pay with the express or tacit approval of the debtor and then um isa -isa natin yan. or when um even without the knowledge of the debtor a person interested in the fulfillment of the obligation pays without the prejudice to the effects of confusion as to the latter share so let's say for example for number one ano nga ang sabi ng number one when the creditor pays another creditor who is preferred even without the debtor's knowledge nangyaya, nagkakaroon po ng legal subrogation so pagpapalagay baga aring si debtor may utang kay creditor one at kay creditor two aring si creditor one ano, yung nagpapautang which is a mortgage creditor for 10,000 and si creditor 2 ay ordinaryo lang na creditor for 5,000 na no? so ibig sabihin nito si creditor 1 ay ang pautang yung 10,000 parang may naka-mortgage na property or may naka-collateral na property aring si creditor 2 ay wala naman na no? walang ordinaryo lang na 5,000 ngayon Aring si creditor 2 na walang knowledge ni 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 debtor ano uh, binayadan niya binayadan niya yung utang ni 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 debtor na 10,000 kay creditor 1. E di ano yari ay aring si creditor 2 ay masusubrugay to the rights of creditor 1 may, may itatransfer na sa kanya ano so ang mangyari diyan ay um, creditor 2 will be a mortgage creditor for 10,000 and an ordinary creditor for 5,000 so if the debtor cannot reimburse creditor 2 of the 10,000 paid by creditor 1 then creditor 2 can have the property foreclosed because there is a legal na subrogation na nagaganap huwaga tapos example naman natin when a third person is not interested on in the obligation pay with express or tacit approval of the debtor pagpapalagay baga aring si debtor ay may utang kay creditor na 10,000 ano uh, na kailangan niyang bayadan sa katapusan ngayon aring si X a third person pays the creditor 10,000 na wala namang consent or knowledge ni debtor third person ha ngayon si third person is subrogated to the right of the creditor so that if the debt is secured man kung may mortgage na property ang mangyayari ay si X po pwede niya i-foreclose yung mortgage property if the debtor cannot reimburse X as the third person who paid the obligation ano however ha, however if x paid without the consent of the debtor he cannot foreclose the mortgage property because there is no legal subrogation magkakaroon lang po ng legal na subrogation kapag with consent on the part of the um, debtor in this case so number three daw is when even without knowledge of the debtor a person interested in the fulfillment of the obligation pays without a prejudice to the effects of the confu confusion to the latter share so for example daw 
Aring si debtor, may utang kay creditor na 10,000 secured by a mortgage pa din. So, may nakakulateral ano. At tos, tapos, ginagarantiyahan ni, ni ginarantiyahan ng isang garantor. Kapag si garantor ay binayadan niya yung utang ni ni debtor, ano, even na walang knowledge ni debtor, binayaran niya si creditor, si garantor ang nagbayad ha, he will be subrogated to the rights of rights of the creditor because as a guarantor he is interested in the payment of the obligation ang tanong lang ano ba talaga ang effect ng subrogation so basically ang subrogation po ay nagta-transfer to the person subrogated the credit with all the rights there to appertaining either against the debtor or against third person, baby guarantors or possessors or mortgages subject to the stipulations ano, to in a conventional na subrogation. So, yun yung ibig sabihin doon. So, pagpapalagay nga, the owes, a debtor owes creditor 10,000 tapos may guarantor tayo. Aring si X na third person, binayadan niya yung 10,000 na no, utang ni debtor kay creditor with the consent ni debtor, of course, and the creditor. X now, in our example, will be subrogated in the place of the creditor so that if the debtor cannot pay 10,000, cannot pay X here um, 10,000 as reimbursement, so si X ay po pwedeng mag-proceed against the guarantor. Ano? 13... Um, hope that is malinaw 1303 um, 1304 under 1304 what would happen in subrogation kapag po may partial payment made lang anong mangyayari so a creditor under 1304 to whom partial payment has been made may exercise his right for the remainder and he shall be preferred to the person who has been subrogated in his place in virtue of the partial payment of the same credit. So here, as between the creditor and the third person who have been, who have been, uh, who may have been partially subrogated in the rights of the creditor, um, it is still the first creditor ang preferred. Ano? So example baga, example. X is indebted to Y in the amount of 1 million. Ngayon, Z, a third person with the consent of X, paid for the 500,000. Here, the rights that has been subrogated to Z is only up to the amount of 500,000. Y is still a creditor for the remaining balance. So, if in case man, kung... Um, preferred pa din daw na um tawag nito, as to between the creditor and the third person partial subrogation lang nangyayari, si first si creditor pa din ang uh, still ang preferred, ano so yun po yun so as another example, let's say for example daw, si debtor may utang kay creditor na 10,000 before the due date ano, a third person pagpapalagay natin si X pinayado niya ng 6,000 with the consent ni debtor ngayon, si debtor has two creditors na, ba? may utang siya kay X na 6,000 tsaka 4,000 yung remaining balance niya kay original creditor tama if D if D ha, if the debtor has only 4,000 to pay for his obligation uh, between C and X dapat ang preference niya ay C uh, sino? sino dapat? si original creditor uh, si, <laughs> si original pa din na creditor because um, sabi nga ng 1304 to whom partial payment has been made may exercise his right to the remainder and he shall be preferred to the person who has been subrogated in his place by virtue of the partial payment on the same credit. So, yun yung sinasabi ng 1304. Yun lang yung ibig sabihin. So, let's go for if you have to differentiate between conventional subrogation and assignment of rights, ano, sa conventional na subrogation, ano yung conventional na subrogation? So, by agreement of the parties as against with illegal subrogation, ano, 
by the agreement of the original creditor, the, a third person is substituting the original creditor and the debtor. And in conventional subrogation, the original obligation is extinguished but another one is created. In assignment of rights naman, nagkakaroon lang ng transfer ng right or, ng right or credit. Sa conventional subrogation naman, yung debtor's consent, kailangan yan lagi, ano, para magkakaroon tayo ng legal subrogation. Kasi, base nga dun sa aking problem na um, isinasight sa inyo, hindi po magkakaroon ng legal subrogation if wala pong consent ni debtor. While in assignment of right, what is required is only a notice. So, that concludes the extinguishment of obligations. And, and then, by next video, I'll be discussing four contracts.